It's on the rise on 104.5 WFMB. I am Benny, and today I am joined by a country artist and songwriter, Noah Hicks. He was raised in a little town in Georgia. Noah has opened for artists like Ernest, Justin Moore, and recently Scotty McCreary. He released his debut EP in 2023 and is continuing to rise on the country charts. Welcome, Noah. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So, Noah, tell us a little bit about your story, who you are, where you're from. What has your journey looked like up until now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm from originally Carrollton, Georgia, and that is a little, about an hour southwest of Atlanta. And, um, yeah, I grew up on a chicken farm raising brewer chickens, like meat chickens, industrially. It's a commercial farm. Uh, had four houses, raising cows, and just grew up working on a the family farm. And then when I was old enough to drive, I was like working on other people's farms and building fences and barns and just doing, you know, all Wait, that good it stuff. Was, it was just a chicken farm. It was. It, well, yeah, I had chickens and cows. Okay. And I got, I got, I got show pigs. So we had like pigs <laughs> on the farm too. And then like, you know, yeah. Uh, and my mom's like, we, we have a big old garden every year. So like my mom and grandpa like garden a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Real small town living. Went to a decently uh, sized high school, but it was the county school. There's a city school that, like Carrollton High School, or the Carrollton High School, was really known for winning a lot of state championships. Unfortunately, the county school doesn't have that much money, and that's what I went to. But they had the FFA, so that's where uh, I wanted to go, anyways. But yeah, I grew up. I played guitar. I got my first guitar in like third grade. I didn't sing when I like all through the early years and uh, even the, some of the teenage years, but I always play guitar. I play guitar in middle school and I also play guitar in uh, a little bit of high school in the, the church band, like the youth band or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where I learned to really, it kind of like set me up for like playing now because I had a lot of the same things like ears and click and all that stuff. And like things would happen. And I like, you know, you would kind of learn to, I learned to like, I don't know. Still wasn't comfortable singing, but at least if I'm on stage, I'm like decent. Like I like saw how things kind of work. Anyways, quit yeah, doing that about that was, 17. Yeah, that was, no, that was kind of my next question. Like how, like doing music. So you got your first guitar and stuff and how, how did that all develop? Like, this is what I yeah. want. My, uh, me and one of my best friends, his name's, uh, Jimmy, not his real name's Ryan, but he ended up changing his name. And that's all another like long story. Uh, <laughs> um, but he got a guitar and we would just learn songs like just off of like YouTube and stuff like that and just play with each other. And he was way more diligent about playing guitar in church because we played together in the same band and I would play, he'd learn all the like lead parts and the important parts. And I would just be the background like rhythm, which it works out because that's all I need to learn. Uh, but yeah, we did that and we did, we did like just basically hung out and, Really, it, we kind of split up, I guess, a little bit, but church always kept us together. Like every Wednesday, we had to practice so like that. So we'd always like play. And church really kept me like my chops up, you know, even though if I wasn't practicing at home, like yeah. I was I was good enough just to read the music and knowing like knowing where to go. Um, cause I didn't practice that much. <laughs> like on the way there, listening to the music, maybe. But uh But yeah, so I did that and especially when I started showing pigs and in high school, like, you know, you start being doing high school things like, you know, running around town and whatever. So I didn't really like care. I was raised and, uh, very, very similar to you. So yes, I get it. Yeah. You just kind of like the Friday night lights or what that was going on after a football game is what really matters. And, uh, so that's kind of where my head was at. And I was sort of like working at 16. So like I was like all the time working and, uh, yeah. But then I, I'm trying to think about when exactly the start of, and I wish my buddy Reed was here because he could definitely help me out with this memory. I feel like, well, I feel like I've lost a lot of stuff or forgotten a lot of stuff. But uh, my buddy Reed Morris, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He uh, is also from Carrollton, Georgia. He lives in Nashville, and he's crushing right now doing his thing, writing like a lot of really cool songs. Um, But he like was already doing the artist thing, and he is, I want to say, like three or four years younger than me. I'm 25, and he's like 23, I think, so two years younger. Um. But at the time, it felt like when you're like, I guess like when you're above a certain age of like puberty, it feels like you're hanging out with us. Like <laughs> he was, he was cool. He never was like a, like a weirdo or whatever, but he was really, it's just funny. Like the differences. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, he was already doing that thing, and I would be like playing guitar behind him, and he'd be singing or whatever. And he already had like a whole little like thing going on, like had song a song out recorded or whatever. Being coming to Nashville, and I I had a clue. I was just like, this is cool. Um, <laughs> little, I'm making money and just playing guitars is fun. Like yeah. after work and whatever. Well, then one night he called me out on stage, and then like as I say stage, but it's like a it's a patio of a yeah. like a balcony that splits, and we're at the corner and we're playing for the patio. And uh, he called me out and I sang because I was like humming and singing and practice and stuff like that. And I used to do it, I guess, kind of in my headphones. And it's hilarious. I always used to dream about being on stage and like I play guitar. So I dream of like shredding a guitar and like, you know, a girl's yeah. face or whatever, like being like making her fall in love with me just by playing guitar, whatever, like whatever that's, you know, small town kid, boy, whatever, the girl you wanted to impress, like. Yeah. Your favorite band comes to town, you get to play guitar with them. Like, it's just funny how like you like just dream of stuff when you're a kid. And I was, I'd be doing that on like, the, you know, working with my headphones. So when he called me out to sing, it was like the most nerve wracking thing I ever had to, like I ever thought about doing like, cause playing is one thing, but like singing, which is a whole nother. And I did it. And there's a video really far deep on my Instagram. It's like the first one of me singing ever. And I play the song entirely too fast, which is hilarious. Cause I was nervously playing it. But, um, yeah. So that was kind of like the kickstart to it. Me and him were like a thing and you'd like, We'd go play at like your brother's 16th birthday party or whatever. And then not too long into it, um, I just decided to, we just kind of split ways, you know, no harm, no foul. We just, you know, I was just getting called to do it. Like, so started doing my own thing. And then next thing you know, I started coming to Nashville. And before that, I was like messaging people on Instagram and kind of like doing that whole thing, being really uh, proactive about DMing yeah. and just like, you know, like, yo, come to town, like, let's hang, whatever, and ended up ma- meeting some really good people. Like, Dylan Marlowe wrote my first ever single, Raised yeah. on the Radio. So we were texting in 2016, like, 17, and he was, like, sending me songs. I'd send him a song that probably weren't worth a crap, but he'd always send back a really good song because he's, you know, he's just a talented songwriter. Um, but, yeah. Like, so that, like, 17 on, that's when I started kind of getting, like, immersed in Nashville and learning who, like, you know, the Laneys, the, like, all the people that are kind of, like, on top now are, like, doing the really cool stuff. They were, like, grinding. Like, Luke Combs yeah. was still on Vine. Like, he, the hurricane wasn't even out. Like, it was a lot of, like, songs. Like, John, I was, like, learning about all these guys, like, John Lanks and Cole Taylors and, like, yeah. these people that had, like, things going on wow. at the time. But I, and I was, like, finding this out through Instagram in Georgia and just through, like, Apple Music had uh shout out apple music they have been always uh frank over there have been always uh helpful with yeah. me releasing music if you know what i'm saying yeah. put me on playlist but apple music used to do like basically discover new artists kind of thing i don't know exactly what they yeah. called it and i th- they were always on there like the jordan riggers and the people like but that so- i i always like Probably for like the past five years, I always listen to Country Risers on Apple Music. The Country Risers and like the, they have like two specific playlists where it's all new music that you don't hear anywhere. And right. Yeah. So that's exactly what I was doing, but I was just like, I was doing it because I like the music they were releasing too. Like, it's just funny now that a lot of them boys are my friends and like, crazy. I write with a lot, I write with a lot of them and like, it still is like, I can still be sitting there like just one person in particular is Cole Taylor. I used to like, and we write a lot together. He signed to yeah. my publishing or not my publishing company, the publishing company I'm signed to. He's there and it just still blows me away <laughs> when we're in the room and like, I'm like, he's singing a melody or something like that. I'm just like, dude, I'm like, I remember being 16, not even singing yet and stepping out of my 85 Chevrolet bench seat truck. I used to love that. The KT and I love that truck. Um, Stepping out and on the parking deck because we had an amphitheater. Yeah. The amp and it was an outdoor amphitheater and he was playing. And like I, I was listening to the on the ride stuff, so nobody knew him. It was all just radio or like old country back where I'm from. And uh Yeah. Like I heard a song and I was like, that sounds like Cole Taylor. And I remember being such a fangirl at Cole Taylor being in my hometown playing at 16. And now I'm just like, he's like texting me, be he's like, you know, texting me, you know. Text me back, whatever. I don't know. Like he just like, cause I'm just, like that, it's that, just so crazy. It's that so just crazy. shows though, you know, these people that you look up to in a way, they are just people. And if you work hard enough, you can be in the same rooms as them. Oh yeah. And you and definitely it's cool when you, they, uh, you see that they have either the same struggles or, you know, it's really cool to get the like life advice. Like I made 
countless friends. It's crazy how I look at like my Instagram following sometimes and I'm like, man, I need to, or like how much people I'm following. I'm like, man, I need to probably unfollow some people in a row. But I'm like, <laughs> I know all these people yeah. and I run into them and like I speak to them. And so it's just, like, it's, it's crazy how uh, just, especially when you get into the writing game and how good just Nashville genuinely is. Now there's, there's, there's some bad apples that make the bunch yeah. sour, but how did you, so you, you moved to Nashville. When did you, did you ever, were you ever writing at all when you were in Georgia or did you just start? I kind of was. I'd, be, I'd get my heart broke or something like that. And I'd try to like sit there and like write a song because I knew I like to play guitar. So I'd like how'd you, experiment. How'd you like get into the writing rooms in Nashville? Just by DMing? Um, sometimes. Yeah. Like I, when, whenever, like I would write with like whoever I was hanging around. Like I remember like the first person, the first couch I really slept on. I guess it's two couches, a guy named Brad Wagner, and he was like producing me. I was like getting demos made to the songs. And there was another guy named Chapin Weatherwood and shout out Chapin. He like, Kate, like, oh, what's his name? Uh, Hayden Coffin. Okay. Yeah. Like, he, like there's the, I remember like we wrote a song like together. And like one of the first songs I remember like co-writing in Nashville and Chapin's apartment. Like there's just like, I was kind of doing the thing. Like I was sneaking in the bars. I had like fake ID, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, that was way before Nash. It was crazy how to see Nashville change in just the short amount of time I've known it. Um, yeah. and that was around like 2018 and stuff like that, 2019. And then when I started hanging out with Dylan Marlowe and like Tyler Chambers and mm -hmm. that they lived together in the same house at Chad, uh, at uh, Chad Bishop's house and it's up on their couch, like <laughs> a lot. Like when Chad would go on hunting trips, I'd be at their house for like a month, like <laughs> just, like saving up enough money it felt like i mean i'm pretty sure the longest i've stayed was like three weeks and uh me and tyler would go run to the bars and yeah he was already well invested in town has been living there for a number of years and that's where i met like Derek austin bryce ball and john wood like all did of them you, guys did you ever you know i guess like talking to your family you know you could have easily stayed in georgia mm -hmm. and worked the farm and taken out you know oh. done all the thing did you ever were you ever like should I do this or should I just stay with what's comfortable? Oh, I well, I definitely traveled as like as much as I could. And and it's funny when you move away, you want to go back because I want <laughs> to be here, but I'd love to like be able to make the commute, you know? Yeah. Um, but back in the day, I, I really wanted to get up here. And, and then when one day, one night on Broadway, it was like in December and I don't even remember what it was, but we were all out. And I remember, it was I mean, we was Jordan Rowe, Dylan, me, uh, Dylan Marlowe, me, uh, our chambers, and it might have been Elijah Borders. <laughs> we were out just you know tearing uh, tying one on, and Dylan asked me at the club. He was like, "You want to get a house together?" And I was just like, "Yeah, let's go look tomorrow." And like next thing you know, we're like on that night looking at houses and stuff like that. And because Dylan wanted to move out, and he was like, "You want to move?" And I was like, "I would." Next thing you know. We found this house that's now? right near Dylan's. I'm sorry. Isn't he married now? Yeah, Dylan's married now. I remember. I mean, I, well, we lived together for three years. I moved in 2020 to Nashville. Like January 1st, 2020 is when we got the house. And uh, my roommates were Lee Langston, Tyler Collins, and uh, which is Screech. And then Dylan, four of us in a house. And that was called The Neighborwoods. And that's okay. where, that's 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 where Dylan technically got his. I love I love it though because it's so it's so perfect for Dylan. His uh, fan club it's called the Neighborwoods. Anyways, uh, that's like, but they, it originated at the house, and because we would have a BB gun, me and Dylan bought a BB or Dylan bought the BB gun at the time at his old house, and we were like just you know being country boys shooting stuff, and <laughs> so we still had that BB gun. So like the first month, it was just chaos. You can imagine oh, I like. Bet. I yeah, can, it was just like, I can, yeah, <laughs> it was just, we were sharing it up. Everybody was always at the house because well, everybody lives in Hermitage. And yeah, it was just that, that house, the neighbor, the neighbor woods, uh, it was a really fun house. That was like, mm -hmm. I, I needed that house for all the ups and downs it had. Mm -hmm. Like it was, you know, that's my first ever time moving out. First ever time, first ever time having roommates. <laughs> it yeah. was like a whole, like it was a big jump, but it was cool that we were all boys and we still are all boys. And, and you guys like were all doing the same thing, you know? So oh, that, yeah. that goes into, you know, writing songs. And my next question is like where, mm -hmm. when you are writing and when you are creating, where do you draw that inspiration from? You know, like, do typically, you, do typically you wife stuff. 
if you think about it, like a lot of times you try to write, you, you write with, you know, in your heart, but you can hear a really good title. And if you just, if I told you to write a paper about like, you know, a girl or a guy getting his heart broke by a girl because she, you know, doesn't love him anymore. And you had the name, the title doesn't love him anymore or something like that. You just like, how would you write that in a poem? Like, and just put a melody and you just put a melody. What makes a song and a poem different? It's just a melody. And so like the melody is most important, but like in the grand scheme of things, it's really just a song's a poem. So like you can sometimes, you know, songs fall out like if i'm writing a heartbreak song it's you know there's only a handful of things you can touch now it's just how yeah. you say those in a cool way yeah a lot of times you know you write from the heart and you know from personal experiences like i haven't said nothing in my songs that i haven't personally done so oh, that's nice I, yeah I like it's like every yeah it's you know i think a lot of after i kind of got into music and stuff i realized that a lot of the songs that you listen to are have nothing you when you're listening to a song you envision the person singing experiencing those things and right. after you know before until i moved to nashville i didn't realize half the people were singing these songs they haven't experienced this so when you you're talking to an artist that really does connect with the song and he probably lived it in some way it's really it's i think it, it hits deeper oh 100 percent. I, I i agree with that like for example, I'm going to try to give you like small town is one that when we were talking it up, like it was, I was drawing from experiences um, for sure. And, you know, the co-writers you write with also have most likely have had those experiences. And yeah. like, this, for example, that song with Brad Clawson and Will Bundy, I know they're two definitely good old boys. And I know they've all experienced the, you know, a small town date, like whatever that is. And, but another song, Love You Too. I've obviously been in these shoes where I've been torn between a girl, but that was a day that Cole Taylor Mm -hmm. had that title and had most of that chorus already written up in his head. And I was just his personal stenographer typing the lyrics while he was just spitting out like fire. So, you know, it's, I've definitely gotten better about every day when or every night or day because it depends on whatever just to prior to whenever I'm stepping into a right, having something or having an idea, like definitely just sonically. Something. Yes. Definitely. Definitely sonically how I want it to sound. I'm very, uh, like very confident of what I want and saying no. And my co-writers appreciate and want that because they don't want nothing. I don't want because that doesn't get them to cut. So, you know, one of the biggest things I learned from this whole writing song things was especially with co-writing is, you know, even though they're Craig Wiseman or Rodney Clawson or Jeremy Stover, who's my producer, like you can say no, just say it in a nice way. Yeah. You know, try some, sometimes they don't, and I'm guilty of it, but they're, you know, they also know artists have egos. Yeah, <laughs> like, so, you guys do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't yeah, even get do. me started on that. Um, <laughs> so you released, you know, you you were, you've been in Nashville for a while, but you released your debut, your debut EP in 2023. Uh, what was kind of like the journey of releasing that project and creating those songs and how did it kind of come about? Yeah. So I like, I've written those songs. I'm trying to think of what was on that first small town EP. Um, probably st- 65% of those songs were all from a beach trip and a, and a writer's retreat. And oh, wow. Um, I'm pretty positive. Like it was like two, at least two, two or three, like three times going down there. Um, and just actually I think it was just the first time we wrote three of them. Miss you back drinking in a college town. And uh, I think of another one from that trip. Anyways, like I wrote small town in Nashville. I wrote a lot of them down at the beach and that was with Cole Taylor, Paul D. Giovanni, which is crazy that he played for boys like girls, played guitar for him. And then, uh, Jeremy Stover. And like, we all, Jeremy has a beach house and we got on there and we just disappear and write songs. And that's the, probably the best. If you ask any artist or writer, that's one of the best ways to get, really good songs because there's all distractions are going you ain't got to leave you got to you know deal with whatever it's you know and it's a lot of fun too because you get down it's like you know a bachelor trip 
Yeah, you're just but, you know, yeah. I mean, we just go down there and eat good food, and yeah, we we like you know, <laughs> it's funny. Hide, we, hide from yeah. the world and just mm-hmm. and it's at the beach, the Seagrove, so it's like can't beat that Seagrove, yeah. Florida. But that I mean, that's just the I wrote that we I signed in 2020, dropped my first song in 2021, and you said 2023 is the first EP, so like. I mean, it was just those years of writing songs in Nashville and going to the writers retreats and just yeah. gathering up ideas and the whole process of picking out songs is is kind of a uh, it's kind of a stressful I, in my eyes because it's I'm very precious about it. It's a very it's, it's a pretty stressful thing because you know you want to you have so many good songs, but you also you know, don't want to show your hand or show your cards too much. Like, you know, you got to have a, if you release all your great songs now, you better be a good writer or cut really yeah. good songs. Cause you got, you got to like top it. Yeah. And a lot of people are, you know, figuring out the cutting songs is still a good idea. Like a lot of new artists are doing that. Um, I will, I'll cut a song, but I've luckily have written all mine, which is kind of a cool, you know, I consider myself more of an artist and a songwriter, but I guess I've adapted to being a songwriter and I've taken a, you know, a liking to it. It's pretty fun. <laughs> um, what would you say throughout these past, you know, years, what was there one specific song that is your favorite that you think you, you know, that you're really proud of? That's a good question. I mean, um, they obviously all mean I, to you. Yeah, they all definitely mean something. I think more at Mama's was a cool one just because, like, I literally sat there and wrote the verse, like, or, or I basically wrote the melody and a lot of the furniture in the verse, sitting there watching my mama just like talk away. And I'm just like, she's Aww. cooking me breakfast. And I'm just sitting there, like, you know, coffee's dripping, guys <laughs> sitting on her side. Like, I was up there early. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, it's like, it oh. definitely is a, it was a cool song to like, just to spark up and then take it to Nashville. And we just like, I thought we knocked that song out of the park. Oh, that's awesome. So the song we're going to be airing is called dirt on it. Yeah. It's another favorite. It's another favorite. Yeah. I I like it because it has that Latin, like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like. The like Macarena. And it's like, boom, chop, boom, chop, boom. Chapu, chapu. You know that, that you know that all like all like Hispanic yeah. songs are kind of like that like that that vibe. Okay. Listen to it; it's got that vibe to it. So I think I it's will. cool. Um, but so since we're going to be debuting this, just to kind of tell the listeners a little bit what they're what are they going to hear? What what is this song? What's it? You know, just give us the rundown. This song is a song about um, literally picking yourself up and not dusting it off, but literally rubbing a little dirt on the wound and knowing it's going to be all right. Like, it's kind of like this dude, basically the song's about a dude, you know, throwing up deuces with it. Like, yeah. I've been, like, you think I've been, it's about a girl, but I think you can put it to a lot of different aspects, you know, if you like, yeah. you know. Awesome. You just got to pick yourself up and not just rub the dirt off, rub it in, you know what I'm saying? Well, guys, when you listen to it, that's going to be my first time listening to it, too. So, we're going to we're gonna have to judge this and let me know what you guys hey, think. Hey, come on. But um, Noah, so you were recently, I don't know if you're still out with Scotty McCreary, but what are your 2024 plans? Do you have any, during the summer, are you doing festivals? What's going on? Any other tours you're going out with? Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any other tours or festivals, but I'm going to be pushing for a lot of headline and like sneaking like some small Good. clubs and trying to like really, you know, get out there and play as much show as I can. Huh. You know, it's like trying to get 90 minutes and hit everywhere I can go. Yeah. That's but that's what it's about. You know, you don't, it, it, as long as you just continue moving and building that foundation and putting yourself. Right. Up. I want to bring the urgency to me. You know what I'm saying? I want to bring the, what's the, I don't even know what the, what, what the word would be called. The, I don't know. I just want to bring it. I don't want to like necessarily have to go right on the back. Not that there's anything wrong with it. But I would love to release music and then tour off the back of that and have people show up because of my songs, not just because I'm like, I mean, and there's a million ways to do it. And I think there are, I'd love to tour with anybody. So if anybody hears this, I'll go on a tour with you. But But I do think the right way is to play your shows and to have your fans there. You know, I think when people say, I wish I could have heard that. I'm like, you know. Yeah, but I think it's important, you know, I, I do think touring with bigger artists, it does, you know, open those doors to new people to hear your music, but also those people aren't there for you. 
You know, those yeah. people, they're, they're not there to really listen to what you're singing and to hear your voice and your crap. You got to make sure. You have to like bring them in in a way. So if you already have that foundation, it, a little fan club, you know, people that will come and listen to you. Um, I, mean, yep. I, I think it helps build your, your foundation of your, of your fans. Five fans that or 50 fans or whatever that love your music and like will tell their friends about you and like post on Facebook, not once, not twice, like all like every day, almost all yeah. like whatever mean more than 500, 5,000 that I ain't listening because I think that's so, I love that. And, and it's just it, it, that, like, that's the, I mean, it's going to, it's, it, it, I, and I'm the worst person at it. Like I go to therapy for it for like trying to not let the horse blinders come off and see what everybody else is doing. Cause it's hard to like, it's a distracting game where that person sitting is where you want to be. Yeah. And that's your butt and that's your buddy. Yeah. So like, how do you, you know, that would be, I feel like that, that, that would be one but, of the hardest things you watch. Maybe it's not your time yet, but your best friends are killing it. And you oh, have absolutely to focus on your journey. Absolutely. And you know that the, it's not about the end goal. It's about the journey that gets you there. Easy. So it's, so it's the, so it's, so the, the people that really do show up to shows and buy the merch, DM, DM me and like talk, like, you know, like tell me they're, tell me about them. So like, you know, really reach out and I try to look at all of them. Uh, it, that's kind of why I do it. It's like, you know, I don't know. It's the money and the glam obviously can get you like starry eyed and make you forget, but all that stuff, minutes. like all that stuff can go away in a heartbeat. So like the real true foundation for a legacy artist, I feel like are people that focus on the fan and make sure that, you know, it's, can, you go, can you go tell every artist that in Nashville, please? Can you go tell them? Like, that's my secret. That's my secret. Like, I mean, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. And the glamour and the expensive clothes. Yeah, it looks good. Wait, let me know how you feel in, in a couple months. You know, you're going to feel like you have no one because, yes, it, the connection. Right. You are there to touch other people. You are not there to be, yes, you're the center of attention, but your music is helping people like that's what it's about. i would if i was an artist i would rather connect with one person than sing to you know, like it, it's not about you know, the extra yeah no it, 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 it you know, you're right and the extra does like shock you it does i mean when you hear it's just exciting. people because like about one video on tiktok can give you all of that can give you everything you want Wait. from whether from the record deals from the money from the whatever one video one song can give you that and you know I was actually listening to a, a a podcast. Shout out Craig Rochelle on uh, his church life, uh, life church, whatever. Was to a podcast, and he was just like, you know, Jason, Jesus took thirty years to start his ministry. So you know, yeah. it's like he. I'm sure he watched other people do whatever. So yeah, and you I don't know, it's your faith is a big thing to you, right? When it comes to yeah, for sure. I always see you for sure. I only got one, but it's like right there. <laughs> Hey, what's up? But you know, uh, it hurt. Shout out Mike Stoll for my crooked cross. For my crooked cross. Well, mine looks like <laughs> whenever mine's like upside down. You know, like I didn't think about that. So, like when I'm, you know, oh look, she has an upside down cross. That's not very good. Nah, it's a, well, that's a sword, and then you turn it back right. It's a cross. There you go. <laughs> um, but no, just to kind of to kind of wrap this up a little bit, I always like to ask people if you since everybody's journey is different, if you could give one piece of advice kind of from your journey, what you've learned, what people have told you, what would that piece of advice be to somebody, you know, chasing their dreams or maybe they want to be an artist or something like that? Mm. Keep pushing. Just keep going. Just go. Just head down. No distractions. You know, just keep yeah. your eye on the prize and know that it's one step. And next thing you know, you look up and you're like, oh, shit, I've accomplished it, you know? Yeah. So that's the one thing that I would give just to keep going. Yeah. I think I think that's the most important. I think, yeah. it's. Well, every, I mean, it's every day is and not to, not day to, to do something not about it. Not to focus so much on the big picture, but focus on what's right in front of you. Focus on. Absolutely. It. You have a right. Absolutely. Go right. Like, yeah, don't focus exactly. on. Exactly. You know, yes, you can have dreams and want to be big and do all the things, but it all comes down to your habits every single day. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. And I mean, I'm, I'm just as guilty as everyone else at having bad ones and ones I need to get rid of and ones yeah. I need to start or whatever. But at, I, I try to just remind myself that when I'm like, especially when I write a song, that's the, that's where, that's what I can control, you know? So. Well, Noah, thank you so much for joining me on 104.5 WFMB. I'm super pumped to see all the cool things you do in your career and all the amazing things you've already done. Um, but guys, make sure you follow Noah on social media. And I am going to be playing Noah's song, Dirt On It, right here on On The Rise. Let me know what you guys think. And again, thanks for coming on, Noah. Yeah, thank you.